welcome Congresswoman Doris Matsui. Thank you so much, and it's so wonderful to see all of you here today. And um, I can't believe it's been 20 years. You know, time goes by so fast. And uh, I want to especially thank uh, where's Dr. Cheetah here um, for all the work you've done as director of the National Japanese American Memorial Foundation. It's really important we realize to have a physical, tangible evidence of the struggles and the success. And sometimes when you go through life, you think, oh, it's okay, we don't have to do anything. But you know, it is important. And it is important to acknowledge celebrations and anniversaries like today also. Now, as many of you know, I uh, was born in an internment camp, Poston, Arizona. My parents, my mother and father, met there, and I was a result. <laughs> So, you know, I don't have any memories at all, but what happened during the commission hearings and, and the debate on the Civil Liberties Act, my father and mother began to talk about it, which was somewhat remarkable, and so did my grandparents. And so I, last night, thinking about what I was gonna say today, um, remember that I had several boxes from my father, some of his, he was a prolific writer, um, he had journals, uh, he had a lot of writing speeches and things of that, and um, copies of evacuation papers. It's really quite remarkable as I went through it, and I have to take more time to do it. But I found in there a speech that he made um, contemporaneously almost um, with, the, with the passage of the Civil Liberties Act in 1988. And he was a Nisei, uh, second generation, born here, went to school here, all-American boy, that type of thing. My mother was the same, you know? She did everything, she was born here and everything. And uh, my grandparents were the Issei generation. They were the immigrants. And I was, I picked up a speech that he had uh, made on, it was uh, August 28th, 1988. And I wanna quote a little bit from this and read some passages because I think it really does bring you back to why it's so important. This is a quote uh, from my father, Ichiro Okada. On Wednesday, August 10th, President Ronald Reagan signed the redress bill into law, the HR 442. This day will be remembered very much. The very next day, on the 11th, I received the phone call from an Issei lady. This is the first generation, my grandparents' generation. She called to express her elation and gratitude for finally seeing the redress bill signed into law. She said she saw it in the newspaper, a picture of the redress signing by President Reagan, surrounded by the principals involved in the redress movement. Among them, she recognized Senator Sparky Matsunaga and Congressman Robert Matsui. When she saw this picture, she was finally convinced that the redress bill had finally been signed into law, and she couldn't help to be elated and called me to let her feeling be known. She speaks for all Issei still living, considering the uh, advanced age she was at that point, 88 that year. And in her long life since coming to America as a young woman, she and her husband and other Issei immigrants like her endured prejudice and injustices long before World War II. She described how they suffered those early days while their children were still young. World War II was the height of discrimination when all Americans of Japanese ancestry were incarcerated into internment camps for the duration of the war without trial by jury, purely because of their racial background. It has been 45 years since her evacuation. Most of the Issei's and maybe many Nisei's as well have passed away since then, including her husband, who went through the same hardship and injustices and was not here to enjoy the day. Yet in spite of all the hardships experienced by her and the Issei's, she is nevertheless happy that the United States government finally acknowledged all the injustices directed on the Japanese Americans from the earliest immigration days to the present. She waited a long time for this day to come and feels most grateful for all the effort of many people who were instrumental in its final passage and signing. Of all the things that happened in her life, this event on August 10th was the most gratifying and joyous moment that made all the hardships worth bearing. As the conversation over the telephone 
was nearing the end, I sense a break in her voice. Convey my heartfelt thanks to him and everyone else, was how she concluded the conversation. You know, it's uh, interesting that um, we have to remember because we even t forget too. And I, I was happy to have picked this up from my father and uh, was happy he wrote it down. And it is important to have occasions like this to remember. It's an opportunity for all Americans to appreciate our nation's willingness to admit its past mistakes and for all Americans to learn from them. Gatherings like this will ensure this will happen. And on Tuesday, 30 colleagues, um, many of who are here, uh, brought a resolution to, to the floor recognizing the 20th anniversary of the Civil Liberties Act. The resolution reminded Congress and the American people of the horrific actions of a government blinded by wartime hysteria and recapped the years of struggle toward formal apology, reparations, and a commitment to never let this happen. My husband, Bob, spent many years fighting for the Civil Liberties Act in Congress, along with Chairman Frank, Norma Manetta, Sparty Matsunaga, Danny Inoue. During that time, I heard many stories of the struggles they had to endure in order for it to pass. And when it did, it was a crowning achievement for all. And actually, it was an achievement for the United States of America, too, because we affirmed our commitment to our Constitution and the rights and privileges that it guarantees all of us. And this commitment is a way to prevent such injustice from ever becoming a reality again. As I look ahead to the future, I have two little grandchildren, Anna, who is almost five, and Robbie, who is almost two. I think it's important for them to understand the wonderful, rich history uh, of what happened to our Issei grandparents, our parents, uh, my generation, the third generation, and on and on because it really represents the beauty of this country, that they can make a mistake and apologize for it and be the better for it. So I thank you very much for joining us today to acknowledge and celebrate uh, the 20 years. And we have many more years to look forward to. And I think that for all of us, um, we're grateful. We're grateful for our grandparents and our parents and um, all of you in this room who helped us uh, get this far. So thank you very much.